from our studio in Southern California, the hotbed of car culture, covering all things automotive. Welcome to In the Garage with Dennis. Here's your host, Dennis Pitsenbarger. Welcome to the program. It is In the Garage. My name is Dennis Pitsenbarger. If you want to be a part of the program, it's super easy. In the Garage with Dennis.com. You can find our Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn pages there. Make sure we want to thank our sponsors. This show is presented in part by both Craftsman and Royal Purple. Now, I've got a great show lined up for you today. First off, we're going to do some news. The new Z28 is launched. I've had a chance to sit down with Al Oppenheiser and talk about it, but we're also going to talk about it with my guest. Felix Holst from Mattel and Hot Wheels is going to be here to talk about not only the history behind all of the great toys that Mattel has made, but more importantly, Hot Wheels. Who didn't play with Hot Wheels when they were a kid? We had tons of fun with those, but you know what? It's about small Hot Wheels and big Hot Wheels. We also have the 2013 Chevrolet SS Hot Wheels Edition, all coming up right now. All right, I'm in the I'm in the garage. I'm on the couch. He's trying not to make me laugh. Felix Holst, VP of Design for Mattel and the Hot Wheels division. How you doing, my friend? I'm great. How are you doing, Dennis? Uh, it's great to uh, you know have you on the program and spend some time with you. We haven't seen each other since two SEMAs ago. Two, it can't be two SEMAs ago. It was two SEMAs really? ago. Really? Yeah, it was when I discovered the real Felix. If you remember right, uh, I interviewed you. And you were very corporate. You had your little suit on. I was terrified. Well, no, come on. You were sitting there. You were all, and you gave me all these corporate answers about, you know, what was going on and what was it like to be about, you know, uh, part of the Hot Wheels team. And then we went out to dinner and we had a few adult beverages. And then you start telling me about crazy scooters and building hot rods. And I got the real Felix. It's yeah. nice to have the yeah. real Felix in the yeah. garage today. I'm a shy, shy and retiring wallflower. What can I say? <laughs> Generally, no, not no, really. no, 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 not at all. Not at hey, all. listen, I want to talk Camaro with you before we get to all this great uh, Hot Wheels stuff. Sure. Um, Mattel and Hot Wheels, in, in particularly, did a lot of research and a lot of work to how to connect the brand with Hot Wheels, and I wanted to get your perspective on that because I know that's not something you just take lightly. No, not at all, not at all. Um, it was, it, you know, it's been it's been a cool couple of years working with the, the folks. Obviously, we've worked with GM for years, right? We we work with all the car manufacturers. GM have always been a, 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 fun, a phenomenal partner for, of ours, um, and and when we got into discussions around doing a full size Hot Wheels car, and this isn't we've got show cars, we've built the Twin Mill and the Bone Shaker. But when we, we there's, there's something different when you talk to a manufacturer um, and, and talk about doing a concept car with a manufacturer. It's 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 big time, and and the Camaro and the Camaro as a brand was was the perfect fit on many levels. Firstly, we've been in bed with Camaro. The two brands go back to 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 pretty much. Camaro was launched in 67. We were developing the first Hot Wheels line in 67. We launched in 68, but one of the first models we ever did was a 67 Camaro, custom sure. Ca Mattel Hot Wheels custom Camaro. Um, and so we, there's a synergy between the brands, which is, which, is, which is very exciting and really, really genuine. But also the, the, the Camaro, is, it's the every man's performance car, right? It, it, it doesn't, it's not as kind of highfalutin as the Corvette. It, 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 it comes in many, many guises. You can buy the base model, you can get the, the brain dead crazy race car and everything in between. And so for us as Hot Wheels, um, it, 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 it really was the perfect brand to, 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 to tie in with on a, on, a, on a real car project. In just a second, you gotta take us through the history of Hot Wheels. And it's something from the original 16, we've got some of your cars here, your personal cars from when you were a kid. Amazing collection cool in front of cars, us. Yeah. But I want you to check out this video from our friends at Royal Purple, the Outperformer series. I've been building and racing cars my whole life. My advice, never judge a book by its cover. It's what's under the hood that counts. This is where we're gonna get into the cars in front of us. Now, Felix, take me from my left to my right on some of these cars, because I believe, can I touch these? Am I allowed to? No, don't touch the cars. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll push this down. Of course you can, they're just toy cars, of course you can. No, okay, okay. I want. I <clears> play <throat> with them, you tell me about yeah, them. Yeah, but that one's mine, don't touch it. Okay. Look at you, you're five years old. These three are original cars from yep. when you were a kid, correct? Yeah, these, so these three, they're not the original cars that I had. Let me come and sit up here so we can have a look. Just um, you can, yeah. you can let me, let me scoot up. These aren't, the, but these, I think to the best of my memory were the first three Hot Wheels cars that 
I bought when I was a kid in England. Wow. It took a little while for England to catch up. The first Hot Wheels car I remember was a GTO convert, an original Redline GTO convertible for the open hood spectra flame paint. These cars, I actually found these cars in Larry Wood's storage cube. Now, to anybody who doesn't know, Larry Wood, widely considered Mr. Hot Wheels. He, yes, he, yes. he retired at the end of his 40th year designing Hot Wheels cars. He was the third Hot Wheels designer. We had Harry Bradley, Ira Guilford, and then Larry Wood. And when I, um, when I took over the, 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 the VP office at Hot Wheels, I also took over Larry's cage. <laughs> and I thought, I better go and have a look and see what's in Larry's cage. And, and there, was, there were trays of, of, of pre-production cars really? from 1968 or 69 all the way through to kind of mid 90s, I would have said, maybe late 90s. Now, were these pre-production cars in the term that they were designs that were already approved, or was it stuff that just didn't hit the cutting room floor? They, no, they, they were they were designs that were approved, and generally back then, the designer would get a tray of maybe 16, 12 or 16 cars so that he could look at. And back then, it was very different. Back then. They, had to, they had to run them on the factory floor, ship them all the way back to El Segundo. The designer would make his, his, his notations, and then it would go back sale, snail mail or fax maybe, <laughs> I guess, as, as time went on. Um, so these cars were sitting in this cube. They, they were the cars, they weren't in pack. They were never in pack. They were in these little trays from the factory. Wow. So I looked through them, and the first three that I saw were these three, the Poison Pinto, the Dixie Challenger, and then the Stagecoach. Um, the memories came flooding back, which is kind of that's part of that's part of Hot Wheels, right? Yeah. You may have walked away from the brand for twenty or thirty years, but it just takes that one little click yeah. to re-engage, and you're just like, oh my god, Hot Wheels? You kidding me? I mean, I the, I'm literally holding history in my hand yeah. right here. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. And everybody knows me that I'm a huge Pinel fan, so yeah. I'll just put this one over <laughs> here where you won't see it. But, um, you know, yeah, these, these sit in my, I actually, I pulled them out, so I pulled them out the cage and they, they sit on my desk. So to, to kind of remind me where I came from, I guess, you know? Well, it's just, it, it, that's what is so special about Hot Wheels. And it's just from not only the difference of design that followed trends, but also the way that it follows now design and the way you make the cars. And yeah. I, that kind of takes us to our next little, next little group of cars here. Um, I'm looking at some of these cars that look like they're half finished or in design. And these two, you were kind of telling me that there's a significance between this was kind of an original design car, yeah. but they actually sculpted the car and did what, you know, I mean, this is an unfinished car. You can see here where it's, you know, the final's got date on it. Obviously it's not finished like the under, underneath side of a regular Hot Wheel. And you look at this, which uh, you were telling me this thing is literally like manufactured out of Star Trek technology. It's, it's made by Star Trek, yes. It's, <laughs> you know, I, I brought these as, as, as an example of, of, of how far we've come in just, just a few years. This is, this is, a, um, this is what we would call a, it's, it's a one-up um, styling book or, or prototype model. This would have been hand-carved by a model maker somewhere, really? probably in Asia. Um, and this is only a few years ago. We were still doing that. They would, they would, they built, they the would, they would build a, they would build a big three X, which is like three times the size, to get all the detail in. And then they would pantograph down to a small three inch model. Then the designer would check that for detail, and then we'd go back and forwards and make the corrections. And eventually, you'd get to a point where everyone's happy, and we go and tool the car. Well, I'm in. I mean, this is a Mopar. I got a, and I got a shaker hood. Yep. I, I, I wish this one would have made it, man. I think it, it, it may have. It may have made it. I, I, like, I literally pulled this out of a cabinet last night to, show, to bring as an example. Um, and then this guy, right? This is, this is one of our, this is a replica of the, the two um, rally cars that we put through the loop at X Games last yeah. year. Um, and and this, is, this is the Star Trek technology. We now work um, pretty much 100% digitally. And the designer works, they do, some of the designers can do this themselves, some of the designers work with a digital sculptor. We build it as a 3D file, we put all the detail in, you press a button, it goes through to our state-of-the-art model shop in El Segundo, which is just next door, to, it's part of the design office. And overnight, Star Trek technology takes <laughs> over, and these things are printed from a, from a blank slate, from a, an empty bed. Um, there is, what it's, it's basically a large inkjet Printer type, you know, a printhead on a printer, yeah, yeah. and it, it puts down the resin, and this thing appears from nowhere. That's amazing. Where once there was nothing, there's a fully, um, a fully outputted Hot Wheels car. That is amazing. Like overnight, and it, it, it's allowed the designers so much flexibility um, and, and and time saving. But along with the time saving, which is great for efficiencies, 
they can now get so much more detail and be so much clearer about what they want before we send it to manufacture. So the, the quality is just, just getting higher and higher in terms of the actual sculpt. Well, let's talk about these Camaros right here. What's the significance of these three cars? So I kind of brought this along, part, partly for the Camaro story. Um, now, the, like we said, the, 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 the 67 Camaro is one of the first ever Hot Wheels cars. This isn't quite an original one, but it's modeled off the original Redline Camaro. It's got the Spectra Flame blue paint, the flat black hood, the Redline tires. This has actually got side pipes rather than the the open headers that come out the front. The hood scoop's different. Um, I think we had Chevelle hood bulges on the original, and this has got more of a conventional scoop. Um, so I kind of brought that to show the Spectra Flame paint and, and kind of where it all began. But also this is a good, going backwards, this is a good um, evolution of how the car develops, right? So we've got, this is the next, from this solid lump, this is the next, um, the next version. This comes back from our factories in, in the separated into the four pieces or five pieces that it takes to make the car. So you could actually pull this apart and take the interior out and it's got the clear windshield. Um, I think the hood opens on there, maybe a bit sticky. Yep, hood opens. So this is the final check before we go to production, right? Everything okay. functions, everything fits. Once we're happy with that, the next thing we'll see is this um, is this blank, right? There's no paint. It's just the raw die cast. You can see there's no um, copywriting on the bottom. It's there's no details. Um, we check that. It's what we call an engineering pilot, um, and we check that for fit and finish. This is a good example. You can see it's got some flash on it where the tools split. So all of those details are uh, are, are adjusted and made as, as good as we can. And then the next thing we'll see is the finished the finished car, the finished painted. Now this one's a collector car. We do, we do still do the double die cast heavy collector vehicles uh, and they can be anything from kind of three books all the way up to 25 books and some of them are exclusive, exclusive to our Redline online collector club. Other stuff you'll find on the shelves at Walmart and Toys R Us, it depends. We run a lot of different, um, different standards now. We, we've, we've still got, we're very proud of the fact that we're still around a book for the basic Hot Wheels car, yeah. you know. And we make six million of those cars a week. I cannot. A week, not that a year. It still blows me away. A week. A week. Six million a week. Well, um, I know why. I know why you do that because when uh, you know the stores open on Saturday morning and there's a shipment to the local big you know big box store, there's there's not kids. There's adults. Yeah. There's adults like pushing little kids out of the way yeah. to get to those box to yeah. get to them. Um, let's talk about some of these other examples now. In one of our other shows in the garage here, we talked about gassers, mm -hmm. and I noticed that on this particular gasser, which I'm a big fan of, there's a name, and we'll have to have our camera guys get on, on that tight for a second, but there's a, a certain name, Speed yep. Shop. Uh, buddy, not only are you now the guy from <laughs> you know, Hot Wheels, you have a garage that has now been uh, named on the side of literally your own Hot Wheels. I was over the moon. I didn't know the guys had done this. Um, and, and something we've always done traditionally to get around copyrights and things, when we need a company logo or a Speed Shop logo or Speed Parts, so if you want to do an authentic graphic, the guys use the names on the team, right? Yeah. And, and, and collectors will know this. Collectors know when they see Realman cams, they know that's Phil Realman. Um, you know, obviously Larry's Garage is Larry. Paul's Speed Shop. Paul's Speed Shop. Now, I, 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 so for a lot of years, I just ran Matchbox and I, and I got into trouble. Another, another guy who's well known in, in Hot Wheels circles, Dave Weiss is one of the famous Hot Wheels designers, was working on Matchbox with me and, uh, and Michael Heralda, and they put the graphics, so they put Holst Removal Company on the side of like a box van. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, really? <laughs> really, you put, you put the boss's name on the side of like a box van? <laughs> and they got really, uh, they, were, uh, they were upset they probably, with me, no, right? They, did they do it as, they really were trying <laughs> to be genuinely they, nice? They honestly were, I upset okay, them. Okay. I upset them, I apologized, I had to apologize. Um, and, and, and so, and consequently, I didn't get my name on the side of anything for a very long time, because <laughs> at the end of the day, the designers make the call, but, Why don't we um, put Felix? Oh no! Remember the box fan? Get well, I was, no, no, no. I was getting guys twittering me, right? Like saying, "Congratulations on your latest design, that the gasser kicks ass." And I'm like, "What?" And like these, my, my Twitter account was kind of blowing up with these, with these like, "Oh, the 55's cool, Felix. Nice design." And I'm like, "What are you on about? Right, I didn't right. design this car. It's not my car. Now I love 55 gasses, but..." And it took me a long time to realize that when I actually looked at one, I was like, hang on a minute, it's got my name on it. So everybody assumes that I designed it. I'm like, I didn't design this car. You were just lucky enough to get I'm your just, name on it. I'm just lucky enough to have it on a, like, finally I get I get a Holst speed shop on the back end of a really, really cool model. You, you know? need, you know what, you need to have those made into into pack, in, into some sort of sticker to get a, or oh, a patch for your oh, jacket. Yeah. Hey, listen, let's move over to the Camaro here because, uh, you know, we talked about the significance. I'm going to move that over here with us. Yep. 
this was really groundbreaking for, you know, not only your relationship with GM to do a real car, but this has got to be one of the feathers in your hat. Yeah. The, I mean, this is, I, I think this is literally the most exciting thing that, that we've ever done. You know, I, we've done some, the idea of Hot Wheels for Real goes back a long way. Um, Harry Bradley, the first designer, came directly from Detroit to design uh, Hot Wheels cars, right? Yeah. He was a Detroit designer that, that, that Elliot Handler picked up and brought out, and there's lots of stories around Harry. Um, and then Elwood, was, he was responsible for the shaker hood on the Boss Mustang, and that was his last job before he came to be a Hot Wheels designer. Um, and then with Snake and Mongoose, everybody knows. Of course. I actually got the drag race Don Prudhomme yesterday at, at, our, at the design center. Okay, we're done talking to you for a second. <laughs> no, listen, no, you know when what I say I... drag race, it was a gravity drag race. Anyway, so the, the, um, so the Camaro is the latest in a long line of projects that we've done. But I think that to have a Hot Wheels production car, you can walk into a GM dealer and put your money down for a premium product that is the, the, the that is it's, you know this 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 is the Hot Wheels package on top of the SS, um, and we've sold out by the way. Like well, it was incredibly popular. It's, well, not it's, all of them are sold. You know why? Because I got one sitting outside. So I'm going to take you <laughs> the little version, and we're going to go check out the big version right now. All right, here we are outside, Felix, buddy. It's just it's wild. It's everything that I expected it to be now. The thing about it is, before we go on the walk around with you on the car, if you haven't ordered one of these things at this point, I don't know if anybody's going to get their hands on it anymore. I mean, you've literally built so many of these on order because it was so popular that I think you're going to have to pull the plug. Yeah, we've, we've, I think we've pretty much run out of capacity, which was That's a good thing. We, we knew it was going to be popular, but to, and this is not a, this is not a, a bottom of the line car, and to run out. Of, of capacity. We can't make any more that have been so popular. That's amazing. So yeah, this is a collector's item now. Ta take me on a walk around around the car, the stuff that you love about it and the little touches that people need to make sure and notice. Sure, I, th I think, I mean, the number one thing is we all felt when we saw it for the first time that this is a Hot Wheels car. This is a this is a custom Camaro, right? It's not just a Camaro with a Hot Wheels sticker on the side. No. There's a lot of love went into this. The red line signature is, is the first thing and that's something which carried right the way through from the original concept. Not only the red line on the wheels um, that we've, we've got the, of course the red line is the class, the signature 1968 Hot Wheels look. Um, but we also took that red line and, and around the grill, we put that red line as a performance detail. We carried it through the interior with the red stitching in the seats. Sure. Um, and we really kind of just thought that was a nice accent to give it a bit more of a contemporary look. Um, slightly Euro look to be honest, but it's still very much from the heart of Hot Wheels. It's got meaning, you know? You know what I love about it too is it's, it's both flamboyant in some ways, but yet reserved. It has just the right amount of badging. The door sills, the seat backs. It was not overdone, but it certainly did badge it a Hot Wheels. Game. Yeah, I, I, think, I think one of the things we're the most proud about is the fact that that little chrome and red Hot Wheels logo looks so right on the side of the car or on the grill. It doesn't look like a cynical label stuff. When you see it, you're like, yeah, it's a Hot Wheels logo on a car. You know, it's like, it's, it's meant to be there. One of the things also, when I first saw the pictures of this car, um, one of the things that I was afraid of was that big flame sticker on the side. Yeah, that's, that's I want to look at this real quick, because when I saw this for the first time, you know, the thing that scared me about it was it was very bright and it stuck out like a sore thumb because I think it was maybe an enhanced photo. When you see it on the car itself, it's very subtle and it works with the car. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see that and see how well it blended with the entire look. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a trick that the uh, the Hot Wheels graphics guys came up with in one of their very first concepts was that the idea, it's the old it's the old um, flank graphic from the muscle car days. And at first we were looking at it in flat black and we were looking, you know, but it, the, the, the idea was to, 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 to capture that muscular look and that, that absolute nod to, to, the, to the golden age of muscle cars, but also to get a little bit of the Hot Wheels flair. So our guys just put this little, the Hot Wheels flaming tail in there, but also it's actually a translucent um, graphic. So that in certain light, you barely see it, the blue shines through, but then just as the car shifts and light catches it, you get that Hot Wheels pop. I think it's, a, it's one of the details that works probably the best on the car, you know? It could have been, it could have been over the top, but it's actually like, it's become a really subtle signature to the whole design. Well, you know what? It's also a Camaro SS. With a 6.2 V8, with lots of horsepower, manual transmission, and active exhaust, and I got the keys. So uh, what do you say you and I jump in and have a little fun? I like it.
already knew it would drive like a Camaro, be fun like a Camaro, and look good like a Camaro, but uh, it, it's definitely one of those cars that you have to experience. I mean, it's the 6.2 LS motor, it's the six-speed transmission, it's the drive, it's the feel, and like you said, this car has always been about being, I don't know if you want to say a rebel, being a, you know, every man's car, it's just something that, you know, I, I wish I had one, but, the one thing I gotta know is what's next for you because Hot Wheels doesn't sit around that green car, now this car. You don't sit around and wait for something else. What's coming up next with Hot Wheels? Well, you know, it, we've, we've got this new program, that, 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 this new philosophy, which is Hot Wheels for Real. And, and the Camaro is absolutely one of our tent poles in that program. But it's about, it's about bringing that brand that three generations of guys have, 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 have fallen in love with through their lives. It's about bringing it to life. It's about taking it from a toy brand to a lifestyle brand, to an entertainment brand. In fact, We've just released our latest movie, um, The World's Best Driver, which, is, which you can see online, you can YouTube it, you can go to hotwheels.com, and it's, 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 a tw it's a 20 minute movie, a 20 minute race movie, um, showing Team Hot Wheels competing against each other to find out who on Team Hot Wheels uh, is the greatest driver. In that, you see the, the custom Camaro that we wrapped in a reflective film, and there's also a, a video online that shows the process of, of making a Hot Wheels Camaro literally Glow in the dark. I love it. Which has never, in the dark cars. never been done before. As far as I'm aware, and anybody else I know, it's never been done before. The thing looks, it's like Tron, right? <laughs> you see the thing at night the and it's cycles. incredible. Yeah. So we, we are, we're pushing hard on this idea of Hot Wheels as entertainment, Hot Wheels as motorsport, Hot Wheels as a lifestyle brand. Well, thank you so much for coming by in the Always garage. Pleasure, I appreciate Dennis. it. He's going to have to steal his Camaro and take it back from, from me, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll see you in the next episode of In the Garage. <laughs>